I want to do a video today talking all about spindles, how to measure them, scrub, what goes on when you steer, how to set Ackerman and everything. So let's roll the intro and let's talk a little bit about spindles. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. The first thing I want to talk about with spindles is kingpin inclination. That is the amount of degrees that the upper and lower ball joint or the kingpin axis runs off of straight. Usually they're anywhere from six to 10 degrees. A lot of cars have six degree spindles on them and that seems to be the standard now. But I'm gonna describe exactly what the different kingpin inclinations do for each spindle and why you might want to vary the kingpin inclination. The kingpin inclination is puts a scrub in a car. If you take the center of your front tire and then you take your kingpin inclination, you draw a line through your upper and lower ball joints, where those two points hit the ground, the center of your tire and the kingpin inclination hit the ground, the distance between that is considered scrub. The more kingpin inclination, the less scrub. If you get your front tires actually with the kingpin inclination, how you build the spindles and everything, if you put that kingpin inclination right on the center of the tires, the tires won't move in and out as you're steering it. That's the big, one of the big things with kingpin inclination and spindle builds is that scrub radius. When you turn left and you have a smaller kingpin inclination, that tire as it moves in the radius, will actually move in and out of the car some. So the tires with the most kingpin inclination in it gets that scrub smaller and puts that distance between the, where that kingpin inclination hits the ground and the center of the tire that gets smaller and the tires don't move as much. The wheel track doesn't move as much in the front end as you steer. Another thing to think about with kingpin inclination is caster wedging. When you lay your front spindle back and you put more caster in it, the larger that scrub radius is, the more that front end's gonna raise and lower and and move weight diagonally in your car or front to back or whatever. It's called caster wedging. So the smaller the kingpin inclination will actually have a bigger effect on caster wedging. This also has a little bit of an effect when you think about kingpin inclination and the camber that goes into your car as the front end raises and lowers. Next, I wanna run through exactly on how I used to measure spindles. Chassis builders aren't always real upfront about what they do with their spindles. And for good reason, I think spindles now, if you can play with your spindles and build your own, this is kind of the black box of where handling is, that you can still do things to get your car to steer better, but no one's really talking about this. You know, the 
chassis manufacturer comes out with new spindles, oh, they're the greatest thing, but they're not telling you what they change in them. So it's really important to learn and keep track of your spindles and what's going on with that so you can understand your front end better. What I would do to measure spindles is I'd take the old style caster camber gauge and I'd screw the spindle on there and I'd clamp the caster camber gauge in a vise and get everything level. Get your spindle level with it, get your caster camber gauge level in the vise, and then you can start measuring it. You take a ball joint checker with the, the slugs with the holes in them, and you get a rod to go all the way through, real long one. The spindle checkers that I used to get always had a short rod, so I'd have to go, I think it's a quarter inch or yeah i think it's a quarter inch rod that most of them use so go to your hardware store get yourself a piece of quarter inch rod so you can have that sticking through those ball joint checkers farther so you put your ball joint checker stems in there with the with the holes in the middle and then you go get yourself a rod and you stick that through that's your kingpin inclination. Then you can take a, an angle finder, digital angle finder. Once everything is level with the caster camber gauge, both front and back, and your spindle is tipped so it's level, you can measure with a digital angle finder exactly the kingpin inclination, or at least getting close. If you're a tenth of a degree off, you round probably up or where down or wherever you are, a tenth of a degree. It's they usually build spindles within degrees of change. You're never gonna see like a six point eight or something like that. It would probably be a seven degree spindle. Or a five point nine would be probably a six degree spindle or an attempt at a six degree spindle when you weld spindles together you got to have a really good jig and you have to have a welding plan because when you weld metal it will move around some so even putting your spindles in a good jig you pound it out of the jig and it may move a little bit depending on your welding procedure so anywhere close, you know, there's always a little bit of error in that. So get your closest number and then round up or down and whatever you do. With the steering arm is the next thing I used to really keep track of because that's going to set your Ackerman. And there's two placements of your steering arm. There's a length from the center of your lower ball joint to the center of your tie rod hole there. That is your steering arm length. And it can be a short steering arm, five, six, seven inches, somewhere through there, four. I think uh, Rayburn's used to be four, if I remember right, but it's been so many years since I've really dug into spindles. But Rayburn spindles were always a short steering arm where rockets and those type of four-link cars were always longer. People always used to say that Rayburn cars still steered the best out of all those other cars. When everything fell back to neutral, people were putting Rayburn parts on their front end just to get them to steer better. So I know Rayburns were always a good steering car. But to measure the steering arm, like I said, you take your ball joint from the center of your lower ball joint to the steering arm length. But then to measure the offset is also very important. 
I think measuring the offset can actually be more important. I never liked those Ackerman slugs that they would put in spindles. When you set Ackerman, you want it to Ackerman out to the left, but then when the right, you want to keep it the same. When you shorten a steering arm to correct Ackerman on one side, what will happen is, is the spindle will speed up in both directions. You'll get Ackerman to the left, but then often to the right, you'll end up getting toe in. That's why they have to run so much toe in the cars to kind of compensate for that Ackerman difference. If, if you are running slugged, steering arm brackets and you move that back you need to run more toe out to compensate for the counter steer toe in that might happen with Ackerman. I always like setting Ackerman where you offset the steering arm from the inside to the outside. Basically I always like the left front slug out a little bit from the center of the ball joint. That usually puts it at a radius because everything runs around a radius of that lower ball joint. So if you can put that radius outside there with the radius that that lower ball joint spins and where that steering arm is, it will actually speed up in one direction and slow down in the other direction, causing the front end not to tow in under counter steer, but then yet you get a lot of Ackerman out under left turn, which is kind of what you want. To check your offset of the front steering arm hole, what I did is I took a series of, once you're all centered and your level, with your spindle, if you take a series of squares, you can measure the offset. You take, you put a square against your caster camber gauge and device, and you can measure over and measure the distance. If it's set in one place, you can measure the distance from your steering arm hole to that edge of that that angle. And then what you do is you want to figure out a way where you can measure the center of the lower ball joint without moving that angle. You measure then to the center of your lower ball joint. The amount of the distance in that gap is the amount of offset in your steering arm off the center of the ball joint. Uh, I think I used to be at with a late model like three eighths of an inch or quarter inch, but you gotta keep in mind is if you're playing with spindles, you have a hub out there and you have a, a tire that's gonna go out there. So when you start adjusting Ackerman, check it with a tire on there to make sure that the rim does not hit your steering arm hole if you're running long steering arms there. I have some drawings describing kind of everything I was talking about here. So let's go over to the drawing board and I'll show you the drawings and you might get a better understanding on how to actually do this stuff and what I'm talking about. The first drawing I have here shows basically the idea of scrub. Here's the center of your tire line and here's the kingpin inclination. These are your upper and lower ball joints. If you stick that rod through there, the distance here is a scrub. If you have a smaller degree spindle, you have more scrub, unless you move the, the ball joints and the build the spindle closer to the, the uh, center of the tire. Most spindles are built the same, so to alter your scrub radius, you're going to want to actually alter your kingpin inclination. And here's a couple rules of thumb. The more scrub you put in the car, the more the tire is going to move in and out with steering. 
because the radius, ideally a zero scrub car puts this line on the center of your front tires. And technically, if this line is on the center of your front tires, your front tires won't move in or out with the steering of the car much. It's very minimal. The more distance you have here, the more change is going to happen when you steer your car. Another difference in scrub is the more scrub you have, the more ride height change because when you put caster in the car and you scrub, it's going to actually raise and lower and, and caster wedge that car. Your wedge will change more the more scrub you have in your front end. Here's a side view drawing on how I used to measure the kingpin inclination in spindles. I had a caster camber gauge and I clamped it in a vise, I leveled it, I put a screw to spindle in and leveled that. And then with a really long rod here, you'd have your ball joint checkers in the top and the bottom. With a really long rod here, you can measure with a digital angle finder the actual offset or the degrees that that spindle's laid back. So that's one way I used to check inclination in spindles. And I always kept track of it when we were building cars. It's been so long now, I'd have to look in notes and actually remember what I used to do, but this is the basic method I used to do to check spindles. The other aspect you want to do is you want to check your steering arm placement, the spindles. This is the length. If you measure from your center in the ball joint and you measure to the center of your tie rod hole, that's your steering arm length whenever you hear people talk about steering arm length. That's your steering arm length. But then you want to measure the offset also. So what I used to do is take a combination of squares and everything and adhere them in the, in the, to your setup so that one square never moves. And then you want to figure out exactly how to measure the distance between the steering arm length here, the steering arm hole, and the center of the ball joint. The distance that is offset is your steering arm offset. I always like changing the steering arm offset to affect Ackerman instead of changing the steering arm length. Here's the drawing on Ackerman and steering arm length. Now you think about your steering. If you're changing the length of your steering arm hole there in your steering arm by putting those different slugs in, when it turns left, it will Ackerman out more because the radius is tighter. So you're gonna, it'll speed up. But when you turn right, it's going to tow in more because this is faster than the outer one. So both left and right will speed up your steering. One way it will tow it out and add more Ackerman. The other way when you're in counter steer, it will actually um, speed up and actually add tow in. So you got to be very careful on steering arm length. I always like keeping the steering arms the same, but then offsetting them, because your radius ends up different. If you can offset them, when it turns left, it'll pull at a different radius and actually add left Ackerman in it, which is what you want. But then when you turn right, the counter steer, you don't want the added Ackerman because that adds scrub. So I always, if this is the left front, I always like to offset that steering arm hole towards the rim a little bit more. So when you steer, the car will actually steer an Ackerman up to the left, but not as much or stay zero to the right. If you like this video, 
subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. It really helps me out, helps me out. YouTube loves subscribers. I love subscribers. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.